Hello, Drunken Buddhas. Today, we're looking at how to get started with somatic and emotional work by yourself. So I know a lot of people are interested in this work, you know, healing their emotions, wounds, nervous system dysregulation. But it's like, how do I get started? Maybe they want to explore it with themselves, or maybe they've been working with someone, they've done some practices, workshops, retreats, and they want to take it into their daily lives. Today is going to be a pretty deep dive guide into a lot of different aspects of that. So we're gonna look at kind of the goal of what that work is, uh, some of the core principles to bear in mind. You can see I've got some ideas of how to prepare. I've got a bit of a flow chart for you guys uh, that will take you through the core process. So that's sort of the main bit to pay attention to, like how do you actually do this moment to moment? I'll take you through that, give you some techniques and inquiries to do, and then a few FAQs at the end. And a reminder, you know, I, uh, if you want some one-on-one -on -one support, you can, uh, you know, go go look up my website or YouTube channel, and there's um, tons of stuff there. You know, resources or working with me, you know, one on one. So, what are we trying to do here? When it when we talk about like doing emotional work by ourselves, there's a few goals to bear in mind. So the first one is is here getting in touch with the body. We all live in our heads most of the time, the vast majority of us, and that disconnects us from a lot of our you know emotions, our survival patterns. Uh, and so there's this disconnect. Our mind is saying one thing, our body is saying another, and that causes a lot of the suffering in our life. And the first step here is always to safely learn to get back in touch with the body, the sensations, the feelings. And this could be almost anything. It could be anger, it could be shame, it could be sadness. But it could be feeling trapped or stuck, feeling a little numb, confused, a bit of ennui, feeling vaguely alone, you know, a little bit distant, a little bit disconnected from yourself. All these kinds of things, you know, slightly uncomfortable. This is all kind of body stuff the second part is to learn to contain these sensations without having to disconnect so we each have a certain capacity called the window of tolerance to be with our physical experience of these sensations and when we exceed it we disconnect in some way unconsciously we don't it's involuntary so we go up, up into our heads lots of thinking maybe the body will start to go numb we'll, we'll disconnect from it you know maybe we'll turn we'll find ourselves having a beer or uh you know watching you know going on our mobile phone that's because we're disconnecting from these sensations that are too much right and we want to learn to be able to contain more and more by going into the body you can sort of increase your capacity like going to the gym and lifting weights you can lift more emotional weight over time then the third part is once you can, you know, lift a bit more emotional weight and you've got used to the process, you can start to process through some of these emotions. Most of the emotions that are triggered up in your life are actually from the past. Some moment in the past where, you know, often from childhood, and they've been lurking in your unconscious ever since, causing all kinds of havoc and suffering. And we want to learn to process those through, which is when we just feel them all the way through. So the key idea here is that, you know, Letting go of difficult emotions is a welcoming. We want to, we have to feel them all the way through is how we actually learn to let go of them. So let's get onto some of the principles uh, that we have here. So number one is you need this curious exploratory mindset. This stands in contrast to this sense that we often have, we want to get rid of it. It's like, okay, I feel uncomfortable, anxious. I want to get rid of it. That doesn't work. Whatever you resist persists. Instead, we need this, curious mindset of like, okay, I want, what is this feeling? What is this sensation? Why is it here? What does it want? What is it doing? Um, you know, what, what am I missing here? And that is a much more open approach. And you'll find that your body is much less resistant when you're taking that kind of, of mindset. It's, it's much more open. You'll, you'll get a lot further. A, uh, the next one, is this intention to let each part be as it is. So again, this kind of goes back to that letting go as a welcoming idea. To feel anything, any sensation all the way through, we have to let it be itself. So that means if there's some tension in the body, let it be tense, almost lean into it, you know, encourage it to be tense. If there's a part of you that feels sad, it's like really, see if you can lean into that sadness, just let it be sad. If part of you is angry, see if you can just let it be angry. Part of you is resisting. So I don't want to feel this. I don't want to feel this. Let it. Let let yourself resist. Like no, no, no. I don't want to feel this. I don't want to feel this. That's that part of that process of feeling things all the way through, um, rather than, for example, there might be some anger there, and we, you know, we don't really want to let it be angry. We sort of go, oh, there's some anger there, but we're really 
kind of pushing it away. And that would be resistance. So you notice that and you let the resistance uh, be resistance until that let, lets go because it's been welcomed. You let the resistance resist, hold it. It's It relaxes. Then you can let the anger be as it is. Related is uh, be true to what is here. So this is this idea that, you know, there are many parts of us and a lot of them are hidden and they're hidden because we don't like them. There are parts of us that maybe feel ashamed. There are parts of us that maybe feel hateful, violent, angry, uh, that are very, very afraid of certain things. And we have a temptation to, you know, downplay what's going on with us. So we, a part of us might, for example, experience some hatred towards our mother. You know, this is this is actually a universal part of separating from your mother is like starting to sort of have this part of you starts to hate them uh, almost as a way of separating from them during, during you know, when you're growing up and when you're really small. But, we, you know, a part of us might think, like, I don't want to hate my mum. Like, I love my mum. She's great. And I'm sure she is, or not all of them are. <laughs> but just because there is a part of us that feels that hatred, for example, doesn't mean, doesn't mean you don't love your mum. It just means that's what's here. And we're trying to be true to what's here. So if there's a part of us that feels some hatred towards mum, I encourage you to let that be, explore it or feels angry just towards some person or feels ashamed about yourself, some aspect. Maybe it feels like you're not good enough and your mind goes, well, I am good enough for all these reasons, but no, it's what's here is this feeling in the body of not, not good enough. And so that's, what's true in this moment at the level of the body. We don't need to worry about what's true. Like outside, there is no such thing. Really? We're just a hundred percent true to whatever is here now. The, uh, the next point is to trust the body, not the mind. Again, all these principles I've talked about before, the mind will try and take you away from them because it, it wants to keep you safe from these difficult feelings. And so the mind will tell you all sorts of stuff about what is true. It's like, I'm not angry. I don't hate my mom. And so on and so forth. Like there's, you know, I don't need to get, get angry at that person because they didn't really mean it. Um, all kinds of justifications will come in. And I urge you to just question those and just trust the body. And you can tell what the body feels is true because it'll resonate. You'll feel, you'll feel the, if there's a part of you that feels like you're not good enough and you say those words to yourself, like, I'm not good enough. Like it'll land, you'll feel it like, oof, that feels true. Trust that, that feeling of truth in the body, not the mind. These are really, really helpful principles when going through this, this kind of process. So how do you prepare? This is pretty straightforward, but just to be clear, You'd find a place where you're not going to be disturbed and sit down for anything from a few minutes to up to an hour. Um, it's helpful to give yourself a little chunk of time and you can set a timer even to make sure that you kind of push through a little bit because there can be a temptation, particularly if you're by yourself to like wander off, you know, you'll, you'll get five minutes in and be, and you know, you know, start feeling some difficult feelings and it's like, well, fuck this. I'm going to go, you know, go, you just pick up your phone <laughs> and start scrolling. Uh, so, you know, setting a chunk of time can be helpful. And then you just need to find somewhere where you can sit down upright. Don't do it lying down. Uh, if you can help it, eyes closed to go within. And you can, if you want to use a notepad to write down some, you know, interesting things you find, you can, you know, open your eyes and just, just jot some stuff down. But that's kind of the basic setup. So you're just sitting down, you've got this curious mindset, you're feeling ready to trust what you find in the body and, and let it be as it is, whatever it is that you find. You're not choosing what to find here. You're seeing what is already here. And you will be surprised if you really start to do this properly. You'll be surprised at what you find, the different ways in which you're afraid or ashamed or angry and so on, um, and the different ways you try and avoid those as well. <laughs> so let's get onto this um, this here flow chart, right? So there's a few sort of prepar little preparatory steps, and then there's kind of a core process, which will... Uh, it just got a few steps to keep it keep it simple. I know it kind of looks like it might be a bit uh, foreboding, but the basic idea is pretty pretty simple. Um, it's worth noting that what I'm giving you here is just like the first, you know, is sort of uh, the bare minimum you could call it. It's maybe a little bit more than the bare minimum, minimum, but this this work goes infinitely deep. So there's all kinds of nuances and and uh, complexities and subtleties to it uh, that you can explore and that if you take this stuff seriously, it's very helpful to explore um, different techniques and, and understandings about the, the way your nervous system and emotions and mind and beliefs all function. So let's, let's, let's crack on 
Uh, first of all, we want to want to check in with the body. So you've sat down and you've scrawled all over your box really badly. Um, <laughs> you just want to drop out of the mind, come into the body and just start to notice where you're at. And you could start at a high level. So it's sort of at a global level. Where's my nervous system at? Is it is it more activated? Is it more up, excited, anxious? Or is it more down? Is it dull, tired, a bit, you know, a bit disconnected, a bit numb? Where are you at? Is it kind of relaxed in the middle, peaceful, open? Or maybe it just feels a bit of a mixture. And then you can look, so that's the high level. You can look at the more granular micro level as well then. So it's like, okay, so at the high level, I'm feeling pretty, you know, a little bit on edge generally, but what's going on specifically? Okay, there's there's this tension in my chest. Yeah, maybe there's a bit of a twinge in my in my hip. Uh, you feel some jitteriness in your in your belly or some, some warmth in the hands. We're just just noticing what's here, just you know, getting used to this. And, and you know, as you check in with the body more and more and more, uh, it becomes easier and easier to to discern what's going on in your experience. The next step is is resourcing. So I have a whole video on this. If you go on my channel and search uh, resourcing, um, I'd recommend you do that. But briefly. A resource is a kind of like a, a support for your nervous system. It's it's an island of safety in your experience. And what this does, it's like your base camp that feels kind of safe and secure from where you can go and explore some difficult emotions. Another way of thinking about it, it's like it's like a container into which you can let your emotions go. And a resource, it might be something like feeling your feet on the ground. Maybe your feet on the ground, you 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 know, when you do that, you feel very present, quite connected. Uh, it feels maybe it's a bit warm and there's a, there's a pleasant heaviness to it, right? So it's like when you turn your attention there, it's a little bit easier to be present in the body. So if you're anxious in the chest, it's like you might come down to the feet and that's that's resourcing you to be present. Whereas if you're with the anxiety, it's too much. Another one, other ideas could be thinking of a safe place. Uh, maybe there's a beautiful beach you go to when you go there. Ah, it just feels a bit more, you know, there's a bit a sense of, being held there or you could you could think of maybe there's a person there's a being a really a supportive figure and it could be real or imagined it could be you know a friend a pet jesus gandalf a tree um god spirit your higher self and you can sort of imagine them with you they're there supporting you they've got your back maybe physically you can feel their hand on your back something like that and just noticing how that feels and so with the resourcing, you want to bring in a resource, think of one, and then just notice how it feels. Again, I'm going through this quickly. If you want to learn more, I've got resources on my website and that resourcing video will be helpful. So at this point, you've checked in with the body. You're kind of, you've kind of established a resource in some way. Uh, you know, also another one is, you know, hand to the hand to the chest, you know, breathing. And so if things get too much, we'll return to the resource. Then you want to explore a explore a trigger. So there we go. Maybe you're triggered already. That's why you've sat down to do some of this work. <laughs> um, that's one way of doing it. So you're already triggered and you want to you know, use this process to, to un unwind that trigger. Or maybe you know there's something that's a big trigger in your life generally and you can bring it up. And the way you do that is by using the mind. So say uh, you want to explore your anger. You might think of a time when you got really angry at someone. Or, or think of that person as someone who really irritates and frustrates you. And you, you bring that memory or that image to mind and just, just really sit with it and just really find that it's almost always a person, <laughs> almost always. And just really feel the energy of that person, like, like they're almost there with you now. And this is, this is starting to trigger the nervous system. And the more real you can make it, the more you can really see that aspect of them that is triggering, uh, the more the nervous system will respond. So you can play with that. But this is a key skill of, of really learning to trigger yourself the right amount. Maybe you don't want to do it too much, but sometimes you want to trigger yourself more to really get to the bottom of something. So that's where you want to bring in bring in that trigger of that memory or that that event. And you can imagine things as well. So if you want to if you want to explore your shame, for example, you could almost imagine your ego's worst nightmare. You know, imagine that you're on stage and that everyone's laughing at you, for example. That might be quite an intense example for some people. Uh, you could imagine someone insulting you just on a, on a train or something and, and just really see that really, really, really feel it. And then just notice what happens in the body. It's like, oof, you, just, you can feel that reaction. 
That's the trigger. And so that's what we're going to then explore. So now we get to this kind of core process here. So once you've sort of invited in that trigger, this is the first step is to discern what, what am I feeling? What's, what's actually happening? So you want to, you know, maybe you've been with the image in your mind. You want to drop down into the body and just ask yourself, like, what am, what am I feeling? And again, this, this can be almost anything. There's no right or wrong answer here. Uh, but it could be a feeling of some kind, an emotion. So anger or shame or sadness. Um, you might get some kind of tension is very, very common, which, you know, we'll I'll get onto that more in a bit. But like, uh, you know, you might just feel tightness in the chest or a kind of anxiety in, in, in the belly. Um, you might also get things like pains, sense of blankness or confusion or numbness. Uh, strange energies. If you're not sure what you're feeling, you can ask yourself as well. It, it can be helpful to go through some of the main emotions. So you can ask yourself, like, am I, am I angry? It's like, nah, I'm not, I'm not angry. Am I sad? Uh, no, not really. Am I, am I afraid? It's like, yeah, okay, I'm afraid. Actually, I noticed that I'm afraid, yeah. I'm afraid that, you know, they'll laugh at me, maybe, or whatever it is. So this is sort of the process of just discerning where you're at. And there can be different things as well. There can be combinations of things. You can notice a bit of sadness, a bit of shame, a bit of sadness, a bit of tension. You get the idea. This is where you want to, the next step is to, is to feel, which is, <laughs> this is the crux of it. And it's a little trickier than, you know, you might think. If there's a few different sensations, choose which one feels strongest or which one kind of draws you in the most. Um, it helps to take them one at a time and just put your attention on it. That's essentially what it means to feel it in a certain sense is to put your attention on the energy, on the sensation in your body and to let it be as it is. So if it's anxious, let it be anxious, let it flutter or tighten. If it's anger, let it kind of boil and bubble. If it's, if it's sadness, let it be heavy and, and melancholic. And, and it's almost like you're just opening up to it and, and letting that it really be there. You, you start to, you can even even start to merge with it a little bit. Like you're just, you're really like an actor stepping into the role of that emotion. It's like, oh, I feel so sad. You can just really. Um, really stepping into it. Or if it's a tension, letting it tense. And just, again, staying really curious with it. Like you're really exploring it from different angles with your attention. Um, letting it be there. And I just want to uh, go through a few, a few just sort of simple techniques of how how to feel things. Sometimes just putting your attention on it maybe doesn't feel enough. So you could use uh, metaphysical hands. This is an idea from the Killaby Inquiries, which uh, I'm a facilitator of. This, you you just imagine two um, two hands, two invisible hands, not your actual hands. Although it could be your actual hands too. They could be very supportive as a kind of a resource. Um, so you could use your actual or metaphysical hands to, to, you know, bring some support to that feeling or just imagine your attention holding that feeling. If there's some shame in your belly, holding that feeling uh, really gently. And it's almost like if the energy starts to move, you just follow it with the hands. So you're just, you're following that energy wherever it goes. If it starts to, you know, get bigger, you, you let it expand and get bigger, get smaller. You follow it with the hands like that. And the second one is rhythmic breathing. So this is using the breath just to lean into this emotion, just help it contract and expand. So if there's some tension maybe in your chest, you might you might let it contract on the inhale and just relax a little bit on the exhale, not pushing it away, but kind of relaxing that initial effort. So it's like... And you can do this with anger too, like... Oh. Um, well, the other way around, it's like you breathe in, it's like, uh, you know, you get the idea. Uh, and you can do that with any energy or sensation in the body, really. The third is to let it, let it move. So again, this is using the body. So it's like, how does this want to move this like fear? It's like fear often wants to move, for example. It's like, okay, it kind of wants to like shake the hand. It's like, it's like afraid. Maybe it wants to do that. 
or maybe it just wants to you know hide like this get small and you can just you know get in get uh get just allow your body to follow the emotion and what's key here really that i haven't put it on the diagram i probably should have is um you wanted to stay as present as possible present and grounded with that um with that sensation and energy whatever it is uh that's kind of the the, the core idea you're, you've got your attention on it you're present you're grounded uh fabulous and then you can you can kind of move in between these these ones right so you, you go this way what happens is you discern a feeling and then you feel it and as you're feeling it it changes and then you kind of want to just discern again okay notice what's happening there and feel it again and you can sort of cycle through different layers in this way it's kind of going it's constantly changing if you're feeling something fully it tends to change and so you want to just notice again okay what am i feeling now um and there are different layers which uh you know you kind of get to which i'll, I'll get to in a minute now at a certain point you you might find that you you are feeling stuck so the that you know if you're sitting with that sensation for five minutes and nothing nothing is happening that tends to mean that you've there's something there that wants to be seen that we haven't quite seen yet and so we want to inquire into it and what that means is just ask some questions of this energy of that sensation to notice what thoughts are connected to it uh what memories what beliefs what identities you know emotions have all kinds of uh thought structures connected to them and it can be helpful sometimes to dig those out essentially you don't need to always but if things are stuck it's a good sign that uh a little bit of that that sort of digging is required and so what this means is you ask the energy a question and you kind of, you don't want to ask it intellectually. This is the key thing. This is why it's a somatic embodied thing. You want to ask the energy itself like you're asking a person. So like you'd ask a friend, like, how, how do you feel today? You don't like then intellectualize the answer. Like, oh, they, they, they feel like this. You, you wait for them to respond. And in your body, it's the same. Your body will respond to you. It, it will probably respond as a thought um or it can respond as a sensation as well but you'll notice when your body responds with a thought it's very different to the narrative mind the narrative mind will give you a long blah 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 answer of like uh well you know yesterday this happened and that's why i feel bad and it's her fault and whereas the body if you ask the body like how do you feel it's like i'm scared i don't know what to do it'll tend to very succinct to the point and you'll feel it land and resonate so we're asking these these questions to the sensation. So here's here's a few questions to get you started, right? The first one is to explore kind of oops, explore the identities um around it. So you could ask, what does this what does this sensation mean about you? Yeah, you know, there's a sensation of shame here. Like what does this well, you'd put me. What does this mean about me? Does it mean anything about who I am? Like what's the identity what's the what, what's the word at the core of this shame? And it might be something like, okay, I'm worthless. I'm unlovable. I'm wrong. I'm bad. You know, and you'll fight, you'll stumble on the right word when you can really feel it land. You know, maybe you say, I'm unlovable. It's like, no, that doesn't, doesn't move me. But you, you say, I'm worthless. It's like, oh, that hits home. It's like, okay, that's the identity. And then if you contemplate that, it's like really, really uh, hone in on that sense. Okay, I'm unlovable. I'm worthless. Sorry then that will take you to the next level of that sensation. Another good one is uh, if this had a voice, what would it say? So you can just ask this part of you again, like, yeah, hey, if you had a voice, what would you say? And just wait for that spontaneous answer. Um, you might say, you know, fuck off or like help. Like, I don't know what to do. Um, whatever it might be. It could be, it could be, a, a, and you can get a response in form of another memory, another image. Uh, or a different sensation too. And I would encourage you to trust these. If something, you know, if some weird image comes up, trust it. That's your unconscious speaking to you in symbols in some way. Um, another good one is this one here at the bottom. When when was the first time you felt this feeling? So if this feeling is familiar, you know, you've got this feeling of shame. It's like, when was the first time I felt this feeling? And maybe like, you know, a, a memory of primary school pops in. And it doesn't, doesn't have to be the absolute first time you felt this feeling. It's just like trying to get closer to the origin of, of this feeling. Um, it doesn't have to be exact. 
And then when you get that image of that primary school moment, you know, you can you can look at yourself in that moment and it can help you to you know feel more deeply into the emotion and to help it move. It's like, you know, you, know, you see yourself six years old, uh, you know, having made a mistake in class or something. And just, just seeing that maybe cracks open that emotion just a little bit more where, where it was feeling stuck. So this is sort of the uh, the inquiry phase, and there are many. This, this is a this you know you could talk for thousands of hours about about this. There are many many different other questions and complexities to it, but that's just giving you a flavour. Now, at this point, uh, it's worth bringing the topic of resistance. So at any at any point here, you know you will f encounter layers of resistance, and they are going to be unconscious. So it's, you know, consciously your mind is going to say, well, I want to feel these feelings. I want to, you know, move these feelings on. So I want to feel them. But your body is going to be saying no in, in different ways. And the most common ways it does this is you notice with tension. Uh, you know, you know, the body might tense and brace. Uh, anxiety is, is essentially a form of resistance and very similar, that kind of tensing. A sense of numbness, blankness, dissociation, being confused, um, a bit disoriented, feeling nauseous. Uh, lots of thoughts suddenly coming in, like the mind trying to distract you. These are all ways that the 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 nervous system tries to protect you from feeling this feeling, and that was very helpful at some point in your life. The you know that came in to protect you when you were very young, but now you're much older and you you can probably handle it. Um, and so these are sort of these layers of resistance aren't really, uh, you know, you can explore them and learn to let them go. And that'll be very helpful because if we're resisting a feeling unconsciously, it might not move through very cleanly. And if we can really, you know, let go of the resistance, uh, it makes the whole process a lot, a lot smoother. And you just go around the houses again uh, with with the resistance. So you just notice it, you discern it, you treat it, you treat it just the same way as another emotion. It's just like another part of your experience that you can handle in the same way. You want to um, notice it discern it and, and a key point here i've got this point here this is change it's like if if the uh, emotion changes then then it's not being resisted in, in, in or at least it's you know you're, you're allowing it enough whereas again it's when it starts to feel stuck you can you could say okay maybe there's some resistance here so you, you just notice the resistance how am i feeling it okay there's maybe there's like a tension in in the belly or maybe you can feel a part of you pushing something down or maybe you can feel that confusion in the head or blankness somewhere Notice it, feel it in the same way, using the same techniques. Um, and you can you can sort of support support it as well. I'll get into this a little bit more. You know the resourcing aspect. And you're feeling that resistance. You can just bring a hand to it oh. and just use some rhythmic breathing. Just breathing into it gently, just letting it you know in and out. Feeling that resistance. And maybe if it feels again, if it still feels stuck, you can start to inquire, maybe listening to it. What do you what do you want to say? What are you about? What does this mean about me? Another good one is like, what's the worst that would happen if I felt this feeling? And what's the worst that would happen if I feel my feelings? And to see what the resistance says. Again, don't think about it too much. And so then you can, that's kind of the basic idea is you, you know, discern what you're feeling. Try and feel it, maybe ask it some questions, and then notice. So you, you know, whoops. You are, um, you know, discerning what's there, feeling it. If it feels, you know, you can go back and forth. If it feels a bit stuck, you can ask it some questions, do some inquiry. Again, similarly, maybe you notice some resistance. You might, you can then, you want to pay attention to that layer first. And as you do this, you kind of go through these layers, um, which tends to look, this is a very simplistic, it tends to be some, you know, at the top, you have layers of like dissociation and resistance. You know, when you first come to feel a feeling that you'll notice parts of you pulling away from it, particularly if you're quite new to this stuff, then then you'll find on, there tends to be coping emotions is what's underneath that resistance. So this is stuff like fear and anger. These are things to help fight your way out, you know, out of some situation or run away from some situation. Uh, and then underneath that is of course sort of the core wound. That's this sense of vulnerability, being exposed, feeling hurt, helpless and and so on. So this tends to be more the territory of, you know, real sadness, shame, uh, and so on. 
that's just a model, very simple. It doesn't really do justice to what's actually going on, which is very complicated. But just to give you an idea, you might notice going between these layers, like you'll get a bit of resistance and then you'll feel some anger. And then underneath the anger, you'll just feel some hurt. And then when you feel the hurt, you'll go back to anger. <laughs> Uh, or maybe there'll be some fear that time and, and and you sort of then you know more resistance comes in and you go round and round and round but um as you know it's very helpful as you're going round you're increasing your capacity to be with all these parts and you are doing work of you're emptying these different buckets of resistance and fear and anger and hurts and vulnerability you're kind of uh emptying these buckets and it's you know probably worth talking about again this is somewhat in the middle of the video but you know why you do this is as you as you go around this you you essentially are emptying out all these stored repressed emotions from the past that are wreaking havoc in your nervous system and your life they're driving all sorts of unconscious uh behaviors that you don't want to do the addictions the neurosis the the distraction the self-sabotage the procrastination this is all driven by these painful emotional programs and as you work through them you feel you feel better. You feel lighter, more spacious. Your body feels more open and transparent. It's uh, it's cool. It's definitely the most profound and wonderful thing I, has ever come into my life. <laughs> I can say that for free. So I know if, if things start feeling too much, you know, you're going around the houses and it starts to feel, okay, I'm getting a bit overwhelmed here. Then I would back off. And, and this is where you return to the resource. So you, you, you know, you step away from the trigger, from these feelings, and you bring to mind that safe place, you know, the, the forest, maybe, or the beach, and you just bring a hand, Ooh. you know, do give a few sighs, a few yawns, as you're just imagining yourself on the beach there. This isn't, this won't instantly like diffuse things, but it, it provides a bit of contrast, a bit more space for your body, your nervous system to slowly calm down. Um, rather than step more and more into the overwhelm. So that's that's very important to notice. And you can do that at any point, actually. You know, you don't even have to be overwhelmed. You can, one, a good processing technique is just stepping into the anxiety or what anger say, and then you come back to the resource and you kind of just softly go between them. And that can be a great way of building building a resilience. So that's, that's kind of the core process. So you want to, yeah, check in, just to review, you check in with the body. Then you just establish a bit of a resource, your feet on the floor, having the support of a, a loving being or a, a safe place. You bring in some particular trigger you want to explore. And then you go through this process of, okay, what am I feeling? Feeling it, maybe asking it some questions, noticing resistance and kind of going through the layers in that way. If it gets a bit much, you kind of come back uh, and resource yourself. And you can resource yourself at any point. That can be really helpful. Like if you're feeling a lot of, uh, a lot of hurt and you're a little child, you can, you know, you can feel that sense of being really young. You can imagine, you know, you're someone giving you a big hug or something, giving that sadness a hug. And that can be very, very powerful. FAQs. <laughs> so here's the, the top three that kind of came to mind when I was going through this. All right, so my mind is going crazy. Like I can't, I can't do this because, you know, just all these thoughts keep coming in. So in this case, just take things a little slower. I'll, I'll sort of lower your expectations a little bit. I'm giving you an ideal, you know, flow here. It's going to be messy in practice. It's it's, it's always messy. Um, so you can just expect that. It's a messy, non-linear process, really. Although I've put it in a fancy flow chart or a non-fancy flow chart, as the case may be. Um, and what you want to do is you can notice the energy that comes along with the mind. So does, you know, do you feel like a lot of restlessness in the body? The mind's going like, you're really restless. Then stand up and like shake out the restlessness for a minute. Like really, whoa, give yourself a whole, a whole wiggle, your whole body a wiggle. That can sometimes help to calm the mind down a bit if you just really, you know, run on the spot or just shake things out, shake out that excess restlessness and, and, and tension. Um, Another way is just to do take little micro doses of somatic work. So your mind's going nuts and you just you just briefly go into the body and then come back out again. Briefly notice what you're feeling and come back out and you know maybe use something that feels resourcing or you can just briefly notice your hand on your chest. Then let the mind go crazy and you go back into the mind and then you come back in again. It's just like nibbling away at this this little biscuit of somatic work. 
And over time, you can you can deepen that ability. Your mind will get used to going into the body a little bit more. But it takes practice. Like repetition is key to all of this. As you repeat these steps, these processes again and again and again, they become more and more second nature and your nervous system gets much more used to them. And it actually wants you to do them because once your nervous system starts to clock on to what you're doing and what's going on, um, it wants to um, unload these emotions. It's felt like it's had to hold on to them your entire life. And now it's like, okay, I, you know, garage sale, get, you know, everything must go. Okay, amazing. You know, it can, it can start to offload some of this stuff. And kind of get more on your side with it. Uh, so that's what I'd say say with that. If the mind's going crazy, just reduce your expectations, take little nibbles, try and get some of that restlessness out. I keep getting distracted. Uh, just notice what it's what it's doing that for a reason. It's not just you know people people treat their mind as if it's just some random thing that's there for no reason. Like oh my mind's just like distract. I'm just getting really distracted. My mind's just throwing up all these thoughts. So yeah, it's not doing it for no reason. Nature is not stupid. It does not waste energy. It's doing it for a very good reason. It's like what's it trying to distract you from? Maybe it's some sense of anger you were exploring. And so then then you want to do like inquire. Okay, well what? What's the worst that would happen if I felt this anger? Like, is it safe to feel this anger? Do I feel like it's safe? Does my body specifically go back to trusting the body? Does my body feel like it's safe to feel this anger? And you might get like a no, it's not. I can't, I can't get angry. Ang anger is bad. So then you can start to explore that with the process. Um, because that's kind of the reason why, in this case, you know, you're getting distracted. Um, or you could use some of the ones I just talked about when the mind is going crazy, you know, get some of that restlessness out of the system. Um, thirdly, I can't feel anything. This is, um, or very little, but you, you try and invite in the trigger and you notice that and nothing really happens. Uh, or you just get a little, little sensations here. You know, there's not, you know, I'm talking here about anger and shame. You're like, you know, like this, this isn't happening, Ben. What you know? <laughs> um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. It's just that your nervous system has adopted a way of su surviving that you needed in the past, which is to, you know, disconnect from the body and from the emotions. And this is just simply, a, it's a, a case of slowly getting back in touch with the body and the nervous system and helping it to open up by helping it feel more and more safe. And this is simply, it's it's a, just a long-term process. You can't rush it. There's no magic bullet. Um, it's just a case of, it's like going to the gym. You've just got to go four times a week, eat the right foods, and you will get more fit. <laughs> it can't not happen, but only if you turn up. And with this, all I recommend is doing lots of resourcing, doing lots of mindfulness practices, resourcing practices, really helping the nervous system to feel more and more safe to open up. And I would go and do some more research into like resourcing and nervous system regulation and stuff like that. And there's, again, there's, I've got a big toolkit of nervous system regulation techniques. Um, you can find it probably in the links down below. Uh, and just be patient with yourself on that one. It can take, it can take time and it takes dedication. Uh, just two minutes every few days, you know, doing five minutes a week or even just like even doing one session a week with a practitioner, it's probably not going to be enough if you aren't making it a priority in your life just to set some really realistic expectations if you're in this situation um it can take some some work but it's worth it it is worth it <sighs> so i that covers everything good luck again if you want some support reach out uh or you can email me with questions and stuff like that is there anything else that i want to say Again, just to be kind to yourself. Again, this is a this is a messy, non-linear process that's difficult. It's challenging. By even contemplating doing this work, it's a very courageous thing to do. Uh, it will go slower than you want, but it'll be more surprising than you thought, and it'll offer value and beauty and wisdom that you had not anticipated if you take it seriously and persevere. Um, it's very beautiful stuff. 
can really transform who you are. This is where you're, what you're doing here is really real transformation and healing work. You're reprogramming your self from the bottom up, essentially. And the value of that cannot be overstated. So good luck. See you later.